In this year alone, 85% of users have increased their use of AI tools. If you're someone who wants to utilize AI more in your content and brand building, but still wants to stay authentic and stand out, I had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Kanye S. Falls where I shared some of my top AI tools this year, how to actually use them, and a different perspective of if AI is going to replace us. And it's not what you think. I, as Nikki, need to go I'm not doing no more TV. and talk about <laughs> and talk no about more. AI yeah. because it's moving fast. Yeah. What did you see that you were like, yeah, no, this is this is it. Giving people time back. That's what I saw. Um I mean AI is not there, right? So like it's really here to assist us to give our give us our time back. So like the little tasks that we don't necessarily like doing um, for me, it's anything with like captions, email, stuff like that, um, where you would be like, get a virtual assistant. I find myself giving her less and less things because I'm finding that I'm not spending so much time on it anymore because I'm using AI to assist me. Right. So there's, you know, just different AI tools that I use that gets me to a certain point and then it allows me to kick in my creative side, right? Where before it'd be like a lot of research or that I'd have to manually do something and things like that. So for like instance, uh, with like the video stuff, like if I record, like let's say a 30 minute video, right? Uh, or like with this podcast, I'll see, like I, I won't have to necessarily watch this whole podcast. I'll just put it in an opus clip and it'll clip up some of the best parts and then I can put my spin to it. I won't necessarily copy and paste it. I won't just be like, okay, took that, I'm posting it. Like now I get to put like certain GIFs on it. I get to put certain words on it. I get to put some certain pop-ups. So let's see Opus Clip in action. So this is inside of Opus Clip where I could take one video and turn it into multiple pieces of content. The great way is not only do I use it for reels, I can also take the transcript and turn it into written content. Plus it allows me to reframe it into multiple sizes like square and horizontal if I wanna repurpose it for like carousels and YouTube videos. And then when I'm done with all the clips, I can schedule them out to all the social media platforms all at once. So that's one video with multiple pieces of content that's ready for all social media platforms and I can get written content from it because of the transcript. So what do you think about Opus Clip? Let me know if you're going to put this inside of your content workflow. Drop that in the comments. But let's get into this next AI tool. ChatGPT, that's my brainstorm buddy. Like I talk to that more than I talk to a human. I'm an introvert. I'm allowed to say that. Anything from like a... I got, I want to do this workshop in my community. Uh, what do you think about that? What are some of the pain points that my audience would have for this workshop, right? If I have to do uh, a sales video for that particular workshop, I'm asking that, you know, so ChatGPT, and also I dump all my documents in it so it can grab my tone. So I don't necessarily always have to be like, I'm Nikki and I do this and blah, blah, blah. And this is how I talk. It already has my tone in it. So when I say, yo, I need to tweet about this. I need to do this. It already creates it for me. And then I just kind of tweak it how I want to. So let me show you a practical example of how to use ChatGPT for your brand. So let's talk about brand positioning, because this is how you're going to stand out in this really crowded social media world. Here's a prompt that you're going to be giving ChatGPT when it comes to brand positioning. This was actually inspired by the book Positioning and Play Bigger, which are really good reads if you ever want to check that out. I'll put that link in there too. But once you are done answering these questions that it's going to feed you, it's going to give you a brand positioning statement, a brand lane name, three content themes, a suggested category that you're going to be pretty much number one in, and then uh, pretty much a tagline. Now, if you don't like any of the things that it's going to give you, this is where the conversation goes in and you get to tweak things and it gives you a better output as much as you tweak it. So here's an example of the brand positioning output, right? So I help introverted creators build powerful personal brands without changing who they are by using simple psychology-based content systems, right? Lane name, the quiet power ar architect, I probably will tweak that, right? That's not really me. 
the uh the content themes the psychology is showing up systems for consistency without burnout and then content that connects without chasing trends right it gives me a category to own and my own tagline and i can go back and forth with chat gpt to get exactly what i am looking for so that prompt came from a video that I did about ChatGPT that I'll put in the description for you. But let me know if this is a prompt that you're going to use. Drop that in the comments. All right, let's get into this next tool. Uh, Canva does so many different AI stuff from a graphic standpoint. It's just a, a, a pure creative assistant for me. Let me show you an AI feature inside of Canva. The one that I'm interested in is the Magic Expand. If we have all this, Let's say we have a photo that's a little bit smaller than our canvas that, that we wanna do. Supposedly, it can fill up the rest of the, the canvas just by hitting Magic Expand. I'm gonna hit Edit Photo, and I'm going to hit Magic Expand. I'm gonna hit Whole Page, and I'm gonna hit Magic Expand. See what it does. Okay, hold on, hold on. Canva came through, hold on. <laughs> Canva came through. Canva said, "Hold on. Don't play with me. You didn't give you didn't give me fair fair situations. You didn't give me a fair situation. This one just gave me uh the rest of the universe. Added some extra detailed right here. Uh I don't know what that is. That's a little weird. Yeah, so that that yeah, that ate that up. That ate that. Yeah. I'm not mad at this. Another thing that's pretty cool is like the magic eraser. Supposedly, I can remove anything I want. So if I wanted to remove this thing right here, let's do this. It didn't really, it didn't really go away. It didn't, it didn't really go away. Let's, let's, let's try it again. Let's, let's try it again. Okay, that, that did a little bit better. And before I tell you my honest thoughts about AI, let's get into Midjourney. So first we're gonna go to midjourney.com. I think this is the easiest way to do it. And I'm gonna put a simple prompt that you could either add in the explore page or you go straight to create. So you put road going up the hill, red Lambo, driving up the hill, dramatic, cinematic, very simple prompt. So for mid journey, you have to create the image before you can make the video. So let me show you the image. So for the image, it's gonna create four different versions of your prompt. So I believe the second one is the best one. So if I wanna turn this into a video, I'm gonna go into the animated image and it has two different versions, auto or manual, right? Auto, you allow AI to do the motion for you. You can do low motion and high motion, or you can do manual where you have a little bit more control of exactly where you want it to go. For me, I'm just gonna hit low motion and see what it does. Now, just like the image, it creates four different variations and you get to pick which one you like the best. I think the first one is pretty good, is exactly what I needed. Do you feel, and I know you spoke on it before, that AI is gonna replace all the jobs? I think if you are doing a lot of things manual, I think it will eventually replace you, right? Um, but if you, it, it, I look at it from a sense of like accountants, right? So before, with accountants, they had this whole filing system and they'll take all your stuff, your books and okay, cool. But the people who knew how to work QuickBooks got hired more, right? And it's not necessarily like the people who didn't aren't valuable, they just didn't go with the times. You feel what I'm saying? So we're in this transition of where we have to go with the times. It's not, you're less valuable. It's just like, this is a tool that is going to almost be required in order to do your job. And if not, they're going to hire somebody who knows how to utilize it because it, it increases their productivity like 10 times. So I rather have the person who does use AI and their productivity is 10 times more, their output is 10 times more, rather than the person who's still doing it manual, but they have pride in doing it themselves. So can't nobody do it like me. Yeah, no. not even this stupid AI. I'm the one I know how to put, the, I write it down. And I take it. The world is changing fast. So you know my perspective on it, but do you believe AI is going to replace us? Drop that in the comments. I would love to have this conversation with you. And the full interview is going to be linked right here. Go check it out.